To get old, it's not for the faint of heart. This Green Branch concept of extracting the memories from those around us is so therapeutic for the person whose memories are being shared and for the people who will hear those memories. If I knew I was going to live this long, I would have took better care of me, buddy. Hi there. Welcome to Elder Wisdom Stories from the Green Bench, a podcast made possible by and all about the people, their stories, and issues affecting them at Schlegel Long-Term Care and Retirement Villages. My name is Erin Davis, and I am so pleased to be your co-host for this award-winning podcast. It's true. This summer, we were chosen for a Communicator Awards 2022 Award of Distinction for Lifestyle Podcasts. Yay! (laughs) As we glide into our fourth season of Elder Wisdom, joining me here on this virtual and inviting green bench is Doug Robinson. He's 87 and lives at Sandalwood in Brampton, also part of the Schlegel Villages family, of course. Here on this green bench, we talk with the most interesting people, the kind of folks in our community you'd sit beside on a nice fall day and just chat, or any time of year. You'd learn, remember, and laugh. Always laugh. Now, before I'm joined by Doug, let us give you a little taste of what you're in for today with our guest, Shirley Arthur, from the village of Tansley Woods in Burlington. It was my 10th year anniversary of being here. And so I was at the nurse's station, and um, I thought, I want to take the mic. And the lady in charge, she said to me, oh, Shirley, she said, I can't let you do that because we know you and we don't know what you'd say. (laughs) (laughs) And I said, I promise you that you will be pleased with what I have to say I said, hi, this is Shirley. I want to thank all the PSWs, all the nurses, the people that serve in the surgery. And I said, I cannot leave today unless I tell you a thank you for making my life happy and making this my home in the past 10 years. That's Shirley Arthur, 94 years old, frank, funny, and fabulous. Joining us in just a moment to even talk about the birds and bees, and uh, we don't mean the ones you see in the summer from the green bench. But first, my friend, my co-host, Doug Robinson, is awaiting us, and he's unpacked a lot of stuff for today, so let's go. Well, Doug, it seems like it's been a little while since you and I caught up, and look at you, you traveler, you. You've had your passport busy. Yes, sir. I had a wonderful trip to Denver, Colorado. It was a conference for four days. The Pioneer Network Conference. What was it all about? Uh, Aging. Uh, There was many guest speakers. And uh, one one morning uh, there was a doctor on the stage giving a conference on compassion. Mm. And after she'd finished talking about compassion... She passed the uh, microphone into the uh, audience. So, of course, Doug puts his hand up and gets the microphone. Uh-huh. And I, I was telling uh, people how compassionate the staff are at Sandalwood. They're the most wonderful, compassionate people here. And I had a little bit more. And afterwards, we went for lunch and... I'm sitting there having my lunch in our room, mm-hmm. and a nun walked in, all in white habit, and she came over to me and she said, I'm Sister Teresa. Would you oblige me by shaking my hand? I think that was the nicest speech I've ever heard. Oh. Yeah. That was the start of the uh, conference for me. How yeah. lovely. It was very memorable. And also, by the way, congratulations on being such a wonderful ambassador for Schlegel Villages, but also for this Elder Wisdom podcast. You were a celebrity for talking about the podcast itself as well. Yes, yes. I I, I did a 
session uh, for elder people and uh, I promoted the green bench and what have you and uh, I started off by saying that when I'm sitting on the green bench my usual questions are how long have you been married <laughs> uh, what's your favorite memories and I turned around and said well I've been married 62 years and my big memory was serving the Queen Mother and then I mm-hmm. promoted the green bench and uh, anyway after it was all over uh, I had some flyers out, our cartoon characters on the table and uh Terry said, oh, anybody like a pamphlet, Doug will hand them out. I said, nobody's going to come up the front to pick one of these up. They're going out the door. Uh-huh. Next minute, next minute, there's 40 people lined up there. I had to sign every one, give them my autograph, and have <laughs> my photograph taken with them. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, and, oh, wow. and one, one young girl came up to me. She says... I've been married for two months. Could you tell me how to last for 62 years? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So what did you tell her? I said, well, marriage is like a car. It's, you've got to have a positive and a negative. When you get in the car and you turn the key, the car starts. So when you get up in the morning, give one another a kiss, and you will start. But eventually... The positive and the negative it will come undone. So you've got to connect them again, and you have to connect with your husband again and start all over again. And then when the battery runs out, you have to go on a new honeymoon, find somewhere romantic, and start all over again. Well, if that wasn't enough wisdom for an entire podcast, I don't know (laughs) what is. But, Doug, take a breath, because we're going to introduce our guest, who is also very comfortable with public speaking, as you are now. Absolutely. She is Shirley Arthur, as I mentioned off the top. She's 94 years old, lives at the village of Tansley Woods in Burlington, and she is a modern old person. We can't wait to meet her. Here she is. Hi, Shirley. Hi. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Doug, for your story. It was interesting. Thank you. It's lovely to have you with us here. It is definitely my pleasure to join you today. (laughs) Oh, what a lovely lady. (laughs) Love it. Just love it. My family know all about it, and they are just so proud of me. Well, oh. and, and they should be, and we're so glad that you have joined us here today because you are comfortable in front of a microphone. We love that. But where did your familiarity with getting up and speaking in front of people, where did that come from? Because for a lot of people, you know, there's the old saw that people would rather be the one in the coffin than the person speaking at the funeral. So so how did you come to be the one who was more comfortable at the mic? Well, though this has been uh, no problem for me at all, Erin. I started out very early in my life. Uh, I'd say around 14 years old, I was a member of the Salvation Army in Montreal. And at that time, I was in a trio And uh, public speaking came very easily to me because uh, I would like to say that it's very genetic on my dad's side of the family. Never had to take a lesson, of course, in my life. And some people cannot understand that Mm -hmm. I speak so freely without pencil or paper. I just speak from the cuff. And so today I will tell you about my experiences. As a Salvationist, Uh, When I told you about the singing part, uh, we, at that time, at 14, we used to, as you know, the Salvation Army used to sing in the streets, and Mm -hmm. uh, it was our way of spreading salvation. And so at that time, we also went, uh, uh, three of us would go to prisons. We would uh, sing in the prisons. We would sing in the old folks' home, as they called it in those days and hospitals. So that is where I started my speaking ability. Shirley, 
Yes. Uh, when you started singing in the trio, did the trio have a name? Back in 1949, who would have thought of having a name? Hmm. Oh. Okay. Well, there were the Andrews sisters, <laughs> well, to be fair. <laughs> they had a name. <laughs> we, were just glad, we were just glad and very happy that we were able to uh, sing. And, uh, and we traveled very extensively, actually, around Montreal. Huh. You say that your ability came from your father's side of the family. Was he a preacher? Oh, no, he wasn't. But I'll tell you that um, sometimes I regret the fact that uh, when I was 17, I felt that I had had a call mm. uh, to become uh, a Salvation Army officer, which most people don't realize that that is a, a minister. And mm-hmm. I had that chance, but... Sorry to say the only thing that happened there, I don't know whether it was good or bad, uh, love got in the way. Oh, love gets in the way. This is where Doug's ears always perk up. He's just a hopeless romantic. Yes. (laughs) You can't beat love, Shirley. Well, that's what they tell me. (laughs) No, I'm still in love, even after 62 years. Well, you're lucky because... uh, it doesn't always happen with everybody, does it? No, no. I had a husband for 65 years, and uh, wow. he's passed now. He had uh, dementia, wow. and uh, he was very, very different to me. He did not um, participate in the things that I participated in. And so that's what made our lives a little bit, let's say, separate. Uh that can be good for a marriage. Do I infer that perhaps it would have been preferable to you had he been involved in some of the things that sparked your heart? Oh, it would have definitely been more preferable. Ah, uh, Shirley, there's called the positive and the negative, and that's what makes a marriage work. Yes, I agree with you. Now, you have two daughters that came out of this union, this long yes, marriage yes, with your husband. I want to talk to you about your role as a grandmother. I just love this oh. because we're grandparents now, my husband and I, to a eight-year-old boy and a three-year-old granddaughter. And I think I look forward most to the conversations with them that they won't have with their parents. Are you finding that with your grandchildren? I tell you that... I have five grandchildren, ages 41 down to 31. (laughs) I will also tell you that I was a hands-on grandma. I retired at the age of 61, and believe me, they had their grandma at hand at all times. I taught them many, many things, from the birds and the bees... And the flowers and the trees. <laughs> uh, I say to you, Aaron, there is no other great love than the love of a grandma. It is the, great, the greatest love. I also have great grandchildren, and I'll tell you, there is, I'm going to explain the difference in a great grandchild and a grandchild. Good. Okay, Aaron? Yes. The difference is when you have a grandchild, you are very much a part of their life. But when you have a great grandchild, I can never, I'll never forget when I had the first one and I was told that my granddaughter was expecting and I thought, oh boy, I'm going to be a great grandma. Oh yeah. And I'm thinking the whole Hmm. nine months can hardly wait for this child to be born. And so I go to the hospital and, um, I'm standing there, and of course, I'm waiting to be made a real fuss of because of being great grandma. And uh, all of a sudden, Mm -hmm. I see this lovely baby being handed to my daughter. And I looked at it, and I thought to myself, "Hmm, I can't say what I'm thinking. And just for a a slight, (laughs) slight moment, I had a little bit of jealousy creep in. And I thought, I'm the great grandma. How come they didn't hand me that baby? Of course, this was only thought. And uh, all of a sudden, I thought, Shirley, what is your problem? 
You've already been a grandma. Now <laughs> it's her daughter's turn. So just back off. Isn't that uh-huh. something? I love the honesty. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that because, yeah, I mean, you want to have that Lion King moment where you hold the baby up and go, ah, I hate you. And, you know, it's the circle of life. It's another generation. And you're kind of being like elbowed out. Wait a second. Grandma's here now instead of great grandma. I love that story. Thank you for sharing that with us, Shirley. You're very welcome. Shirley, when you was with the Girl Guides, what was your favorite camping ground? Oh, that's no problem. Uh, first of all, I was a Girl Guide captain for 17 years, and I had a very large company. But our favorite camping grounds was in a place called Lake Lashigan in Montreal, which would be in the Laurentians. And we went, mm. it, was a, yeah. it was a Salvation Army Girl Guide camp. And we, uh, I would go there every summer and take the two weeks of my holidays. And I would be so happy to join in with probably two, 200 to 300 girls uh, definitely every week and played a great part in it. And it was a great, it was a great experience. Certainly not, that was back in the 40s, so that would be nothing like it would be. Oh, that's a long while yeah, ago. Yeah, 1943 that was. And I camped from 1943 until 1952. Thank you for that, Shirley. What was the most important lesson that you taught your girl guides that you hope they value and carry with them even to this day, if they remember those lessons, Shirley? My lesson to them was to always be an example. And I was, uh, I always felt that I was a good example and uh because, again, I mentioned my Salvation Army bringing up. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it came very natural to me. And uh, right now, as you have mentioned this, uh, brought this question to mind, I've often sat in my room and thought, I wonder how these girls and what they're doing today, uh, some of them would probably be in their 70s, and mm-hmm. I wonder if they remember what uh, Guide Captain Shirley uh, Rogers at the time uh, taught them. If only I had a way to, be, to find out where they were and what they were doing, uh, I'd be so glad. But, you know, it's not because I want to brag about this, certainly not. I would just like to know if anything I told them, in, in, like our motto was, be prepared. And uh, I only remember telling them what was best that th- for them in their, in their young lives. And back in those days, you couldn't talk to them like you would talk today. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you couldn't talk to them about, uh, well, I don't want to use that word, sex. Is that a good word? Like, you know, the things of... It can be. Um uh, no, but I know what you mean, to prepare them for the way to of the world. To prepare them and- for the way of the world. And even if I didn't do it with my girl guides, I'll tell you something, that I have three granddaughters out of, out of the five grandchildren, and I mm-hmm. most certainly have had very lengthy talks with them when they each turned about 15, and I told them what was right and what was wrong. And there, there was one, and I mm-hmm. said to her, I said, I'd like to um, take you aside and, and and tell you something that's that I want you to understand about gr- what I'm thinking. I said, you know, Grandma may not always agree with what you do, but I'll tell you something. Grandma will always love you. And uh, when they when the girl turned 21, she had a birthday dinner, and I was attending that birthday dinner. And she took me aside. I shall never forget the look on her face when she took me aside and she said, Grandma, remember that talk we had at 15? She said, I always thought of you, and I remembered what you told me, what was right and what is wrong. I had an extreme closeness with my, my grandkids. How did that make you feel? 
when she told you that at 21? I, I must admit that I did have a, a couple of tears in my eyes. And oh, I thought, I you know, I said to her, I said, thank you for acknowledging this and put it, bringing me aside and, and having the, the way with all to, to say to me, Grandma, thank you for what you, have to- what you told me and that what you told me was so right. I think all of us as grandparents, even as parents, yearn for that moment when you know that something that you said was held like a candle. I find myself wishing that you were in my life, Shirley, and it's because I had my grandmother as my matron of honor at my wedding. I held her so close in my heart, and we were so close. And, you know, she was straight shooter. There was never a question about what was going on in her mind at any time. And you kind of remind me of her, and I'm sure Doug is the same, hearing a yep. woman who's not afraid to speak her mind. And that is really, really, you were outside your generation, but you are also a luminary today. Thank, thank you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Shirley, yeah. uh, you learned to play the coronet for the Salvation Army. How long did it take you to learn to play the coronet? Not too long in the Salvation Army. You had band lessons uh, twice a week. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, my husband, who was not a Salvationist, uh, who was a Roman Catholic, um, we we met when we were 14, we were kids, and at hmm. 17, he asked me if he could come to my church because he thought he, I, I'd spent an awful lot of time there, and he said, uh, I'd like to fit in with something. But anyway, he did come, and uh, he became a Salvationist. He, he, I, I never once said to him uh, anything about, you know, not being a you know, changing his religion at all. And after he came a few times, he came. And then he also learned to play the E-flat bass. Oh, good for yes. him. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so playing a cornet, I played second cornet because uh, I preferred that because I am a natural alto. Cornet, does it have valves like a trumpet or does it not? Yeah, three. Uh, oh, okay, okay. It looks exactly like a trumpet, except it's shorter. If someone handed one to you now, could you get your embouchure in gear and get out a couple of notes? I don't know because I, I have a little trouble with my breathing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I get yeah. that. I get that. There's this meme that goes around on the internet every now and then. And the question is, and I'm going to ask Doug, Doug, I'm going to ask you to answer this too. Yeah. If you had to stand up and speak to a group for five minutes about anything, like have your own TED Talk about anything, they say that everybody has this in them. What would your topic be? And I'm kind of just springing this on you now, Shirley, because you have told us some incredible stories. But if you had to, five minutes, Shirley, on this topic, go. What would it be? I tell you what I would talk to them about. What? At being my age now, I would tell them about the love of Jesus. Ah. Very much. And how important it is to be a child of his. I'm happy because God has allowed me to live to this age, not without a lot of illnesses. I've had four cancers uh, Mm. that I survived. I've had a colostomy that I survived and had it uh, put back. Uh, I've been through many, many turmoils in my life, believe me. And... uh, God has been very good to me and very and brought me through it. And I would say that to, to my grandchildren, and they all know what my beliefs are. Unfortunately, they don't all believe as I do, but that's okay. I have taught them. And uh, that's it. Shirley, you heard Doug speak earlier about how he was singing the praises of the people at the Schlegel Villages. And uh, I know that you have some perspective on that. And I wonder, as someone who is so eloquent, how you would go about talking someone into joining the family as a personal support worker, a nurse, or another role at a Schlegel Village? No problem at all, Erin. I had the opportunity of going to support office in Kitchener, some years ago, and talking to a group of uh, PSWs that were 
just on their way out. And there was about, I'd say, 200 of them at that time. And as a matter of fact, um, uh, Ron Schlegel himself was standing there when I was addressing them. Wow. The uh, VP, who is still the VP, uh, Rose Lamb, had asked me a question. And uh, she asked me to talk to them and, and, and to tell them what to expect. And I stood up and I said to them, now that you have learned all about it, what it is to be a PSW, and today you're going forward, and you're going, you are going to get your certificates, and you are going to be a PSW, a practicing one, do me a favor and remember that it's not an easy job, but it's a job that takes dedication and I said, the most important thing is your empathy and as much love as you can give to the uh, resident. And I said, you will, if you do that, you will become a very good PSW. And then I also spoke to a group of people that were coming in, uh, 200 people. They called me back to do another talk to them, and they were just going to be PSWs. So I told them a few words of advice, too. We are giving you a standing ovation right now. We are so humbled and grateful to you for accruing all of this wisdom over your 94 years and managing to boil it down to this podcast. Shirley, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. Right, Doug? Yes. Shirley, before I go, can an 87-year-old blow a 94-year-old a kiss? Yeah, I'd love it. (laughs) How's that one? Oh, I felt that. That was good. (laughs) <laughs> I have I have another I haven't had a kiss in a long time. Oh, no bar. goodness. <laughs> another love connection on the green bench. <laughs> okay. Guys. Thank you very much for Good. having me, please. Oh, Thank you. Are you kidding? Our honor. Thank you, Shirley. And by the way, Doug, I do promise in our next podcast I will ask you what would that five-minute TED Talk be about? So you've got a little while to think about it, okay? I'm ready for you. I know you are. I know you are. All right. Thanks again, folks. And thank you also to Trish Holmes. She's seated at Shirley's side. And to Brendan Cater, who is there trying desperately to keep Doug in line. We'll talk to you next time. (laughs) Thanks, Sarah. Bye for now. We hope you'll join Doug and me again. Subscribe for additional episodes here at the Green Bench, and you'll be notified just as soon as they're up. And we're inviting you to to share your thoughts and opinions on social media. We really care what you think using hashtag Elder Wisdom, and you'll help other people find us here on this Green Bench, too. And if you would, take a moment to rate and review the Elder Wisdom podcast. Go to elderwisdom.ca to find the link. And please, while you're there, fill out the Elder Wisdom Pledge. In our next episode, Evelyn Brindle will join us. She's a resident at the village of Erin Meadows in Mississauga. She's got stories of travel, of having a child living on another continent, of connection and of community, which is what life at Schlegel Villages is all about. On behalf of Doug Robinson, I'm Erin Davis. Your seat on the green bench is ready and waiting. Elder Wisdom, Stories from the Green Bench, is brought to you by Schlegel Villages, a complete continuum of care, offering independent living to long-term care, celebrating and honoring the wisdom of the elder. To learn more about us, please go to our website, schlegelvillages.com.